All right, welcome y'all. We're so happy you're here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. And I am painting this beautiful record. <laughs> Hawaiian Eye was the original. Oh, that actually works for this really well. Okay, so just go to your local vintage store and a lot of times they sell these for a dollar, just old records. And I've got graphite paper and the line art on here. You can be creative and use any kind of line art that you want, but this is the one I've made. We do have a painting kit that comes with this as well. I'll provide the link below. And let's talk about how we did this. Okay, so again, I just tape up at the very top. I'm gonna to go ahead and start with just the graphite paper first. The crucial part is to make sure and place the shiny black side facing down. That way you actually have an impression here on the album. And then you'll tape that down, but just at the top. Then do your line art here over the top too. Just tape at the top. You wanna to make sure and keep all your sides and bottom free so that you can lift up your work and check your work at the base here. And then I just use a very simple pencil and I go ahead and trace around the line art. Now, typically I have you trace everything. In this particular design, I, I'm doing a lot of white up here at the top, which makes for a lot of um, kind of intricate cut-in work here. You could still do the bird, and the tree I would recommend just not doing, and then I'm gonna teach you the technique on how to paint the tree over the top. So we can, let me see what I've got here. I do not have the bird done. I'll make sure and do that here in a second. Um, but I definitely think you should trace out the mountains. And then when you're done and you lift up, it's kind of hard to keep seeing that pencil work on there. So I always take a metallic gold marker, something that has really good contrast, and I go ahead and place it over the images that I want. This also comes with the kit too. So um, if you buy kits from me, I just make sure that you have everything that you need to create everything that I do in my own project. The only thing that I do not include, of course, is the water. You have to do that on your own, but other than that, I have everything you need. All right, so let's go ahead and place this back down. Just wanted to give you a nice visual on this. We're about to switch camera views as well so that you can have a really nice aerial view of the work while I'm going here and see it really well. And so here we go. Let's go ahead and switch. USB camera. Nice. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and lift this out of the way. We'll get more room for our creative projects here. So I've got my water nearby. Uh, this is the paint kit. Mine's a little bit of a mess, but this is the paint kit. It's really nice heavy body acrylic paints here that I always include with every single kit. And then we have a lovely brush kit. I always have little party favors too. I don't have them over here right now, but I usually always have some little snack candies and little party blowouts, fun things to make it feel like a party I put in there. A little apron. And then I've got your napkins and your brush set. So let's talk about our brush set here really quick. We have a little family of our brushes. So I call this Mama. And then I call this little buddy. And then I call this little bit. All right, so that's my cool family. All right, napkins. All right, so we're good. Now, as I mentioned, I said we were going to do the little bird here in the sky. We can go ahead and get that worked in. So let's give it, this will also give you a good example of what it looks like to do the tracing on a small level. I usually like to work this in in advance. So you don't have to sit there and watch me trace forever. You just kind of get the gist of it. And then what you can do with these videos is you can actually just kind of stop and pause. Get caught up. And if you feel like I'm becoming a bit of a chatterbox, mm -hmm. you can always fast forward as well. <laughs> All good. I will not be offended. Okay. So there is my cute little bird. And let's go ahead and lift this off. really on there. Way to go. Alright, so 
I will say this can be used multiple times if you're kind of thrifty that way and you want to repurpose. You're welcome to do that. I usually have so much of it I end up chunking a lot of mine because I get so overwhelmed with stuff. All right, so you know what? I said I was going to use my bird. That gives you a nice demo of what that looks like. I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to teach you how to paint it on because to me, he is, in terms of my composition, he's way too close to my um, my moon or my sun or however you want to interpret that design-wise. So I am not going to do that. I'm going to just not, <laughs> not use that. But um, if you have like a, sometimes these records have smaller inset circles. Like you see this little line here. Sometimes I only go to there, in which case he would be perfectly formatted there and you could just go ahead and use that. The other suggestion that I'll say is that you can get completely done painting all your white in the background. Then you can come back with your line art, do a little, like just cut around the shapes that you need and the graphite paper and just kind of place those on where you need them and do a retrace when your uh, all of your paint is completely dry. So that is another way to handle it. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and get started here with our painting. So I've got a mixing plate nearby, just simple styrofoam plates are perfectly awesome. Um, I use a lot of white, so I typically carry copious amounts of white. If you start painting a lot with me, um, this is another good option. But for the most part, our painting kit always has way more than enough paint, and I end up using the same painting kit for several paintings. It's really long lasting, works really great. All right, so on this first step here, um, let's go ahead and get started with the white in the background. I'm gonna leave this raw, because we're gonna come back in with some metallic on that. But just pure white is going to be in our sky. So here we go. We've got Gary V texting me right now. <laughs> Y'all signed up with Gary V? Some inspiration. I like to keep those daily motivational speakers in my mind going all the time. Makes me feel good, keeps me motivated. And so I'm signed up for Gary V Tech. So right now, if you hear a little ding ding ding, that's Gary V. He's texting me right now. All right, so here we go. We're going to go ahead and start to paint this into the sky. So just pure white. And to get a nice thick coat, which this is covering beautifully, but I'm gonna go ahead and take my brush and hold it over to the flat side here, parallel to this lovely record album. Beautiful stuff right there. And if you have any translucent um, long lasting effects happening through this. Of course, there's always a second coat if you want to feather out brush strokes and have a really opaque finish. But for right now, it looks like it's coming on there really nicely. I'm just going to fill all this in. entire top section and again I'm going to come I'm going to cut around this circle and cut around the mountain tops I feel so popular Gary V keeps texting me Oh my gosh, I got so caught up in what I was doing, I accidentally, um, oops, hold on. Let me do this. I have a feeling I may do this again. So I'm gonna actually do a gold base on my circle here. So here is some cadmium yellow. And uh, this is titanium white. I need to tell you that too. Oops, I have all this in the description, but I'm gonna do a little pea-sized dollop of that there. We need a gold base for this anyway, so let me work my mama back into this gold color. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Take my finger and just kind of wipe so I know where I'm at. This is going to be a really easy fix because it's still wet and I can still just do a clean wipe. 
but I can see myself forgetting to do this again. So I'm going to go ahead and take my cabin in yellow and go ahead and go over this circle here. That way I won't forget. I'll just go ahead and work that in. At least get a first coat on that. I have a little saying. It's called, there are no mistakes, only possibilities. It's a good thing. It's a good philosophy. For pretty much all of them. Okay, so there we go. Now, let's rinse out. Let's go back to pure white. And I will try to stay focused. <laughs> All right, so I cleaned off my Mama brush. We're going back into the pure titanium white paint here. And let's go ahead and cut back in around that little circle. And feel free to kind of turn the album to, as you work, to the best vantage point for getting to where you need to go. So you can see we have a little bit of transparency in here. So you have some options and that you can let it set up and dry and then come back in and just do a second coat. Or like in this case, I'm gonna to try to go ahead and get nice full coverage in the beginning. So I'm just gonna to start to use a more gentle hand and just kind of lay it on over the top. And feather that out. So beautiful. Okay. <laughs> like, calm down, Tipsy. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're going to rinse out this brush round and round and round. Firm pressure. It'll come clean. All right, let's go ahead and wipe off. 
All right, so now we're going to do shades of blue. We're going to get some turquoise going. It's going to be really gorgeous. So here we go. Primary cyan blue. Little fat doll at the bat. Call that about a dime size. And then let's go with some Viridian. Oh, and by the way, when these tubes of paint are brand new, check that out. They're gonna, they are going, let me, <laughs> let me enunciate a little bit more clearly, shall I? Um, they have, oh, this is that one I couldn't get into earlier. They have the foil on there, and normally they just peel right off. But sometimes they can be a little bit stubborn. But it is so that they can stay awesome and sugar. This one's coming off me pretty well today, sort of. They're normally not this stubborn, but there we go. All right, so this is Viridian. It's kind of like a teal color. Let's go ahead and do another fat dial of that. And then I also continue to use, in the mix, some titanium white. Wonderful. Okay, so let's do another little dial of that nearby. All right, so let's go ahead and start to work these two colors in together. So you're welcome to be creative at any point, do your own thing. Sometimes what's really beautiful in mountainside colors are um, shades of lavender and violet. That's another option that I think is really pretty. Um, but today we're going to go with some turquoise. And a little bit of blue here. We're going to get some of that turquoise happening now. Push that back and forth. And this whole first top section in here, I'm going to go ahead and work in with one shade. See this cool little hole right here? I'll tell you what I love. When you go to hang this as art, you can just use a screw and then just a drill gun and just screw this right into the wall and it's such a lightweight piece of art that I mean, you don't really even need anchors or anything it's just really easy to hang I love that now, my husband would disagree always secures everything in such a stubborn, ridiculous way. But if we have earthquakes, nothing is going to come from that wall. I mean, it is crazy the kind of work he goes to to secure things, which is awesome. I admire that. I'm just kind of a fast and dirty get her done when it comes to that kind of stuff. But thank God I'm not the one hanging anything in this house. That's better for everyone. I just make the art, he hangs it. Pretty good system. But with this being so lightweight, it's not that big of a deal for this to hang on the wall. Like I think he might even have a little bit of grace for me on hanging it my way. Really cool. I'm going to go ahead and come in with a different shade now. A little bit darker this time, so we're going to add a little bit more of that blue. Create a little bit of contrast. What are you going to treat yourself to? What? I'm teaching, but I'm, I'm asking. What are you going to treat yourself to? My cupcake. Oh, a cupcake. A red velvet cupcake. Yes, it was my honey bear's birthday yesterday. Oh, 
It is beautiful. I love you. <laughs> I just made everyone hungry. It is, they're really good. Okay, we're going to keep going here. With the darker blue. And now I'm going to paint your little mountain blue. Does anybody know where that comes from? Ish. Kind of a paraphrased reference from 40 year old virgin where he's painting his little men and he says, And now I'm going to paint your little pants blue. If you've not seen that movie, it's really funny. Steve Carell. and feather this in. I realize I'm painting over this gold line, but those are super easy to work back in when the paint's dry, but that was just kind of a nice little reference for me to have a sense of space and where things were, but we can work that back in later. Again, just kind of feather this out back and forth. Crisscross strokes. All right, quite lovely. And now I'm going to shift back to a different color. So I want more white now. A lot more white. I'm just going to make this a little bit different. A little more sea foam. Creating that contrast right next to that similar shade. We're still working with the same color family, but definitely making it lighter to where we've got contrast. Looking good, loving it. Okay, so again, a little bit of a different color here. So again, we just want it to be slightly different. So we'll just kind of keep mixing until until we're a little different. I think we're already there. We'll put it next to it. Let's make it a little bit darker. So now we have our beautiful mountains done here. I'm going to go ahead and rinse out now.
So we're gonna give this a little bit of setup and dry time and while we're letting that dry then we can come back in and do our tree and our bird. So I'm gonna put this off to the side. Let's grab another plate and get some Mars black. Size them out of that. And I'm going to be using our little bit brush. Let's grab a little bit of water. Work that in a little bit. This is kind of a heavy body to look, acrylic paint. So sometimes it makes it easier, more fluid to work with it with just a teeny amount of water. But again, it's easier if it's in a flat space. That way you don't have to worry about water runs. So it's a little more of our, this positioning is more of our friend, especially for beginners. I'm also going to twist this out. That loads up the brush, but it twists it into a fine point. And then I'm going to go ahead and start my tree. Basically, right through here, I'm just going to pull up. Have to rinse off because I just grabbed a lot of white there. And I go back into the black. Let's go ahead and kind of work that in to that little section. Now, if you're completely dry here, then that's not going to be as big of an issue. But all right, now I'm going to make this base a little bit full. So do a little bit of a triangular action here. And pull that out. And if your tree has little, I'm going to just make some intentionally, like little knots or imperfections, that's actually okay. That's a good thing. Trees have those in real life. So I'm just, I just did a few just to kind of let you be at ease there and not try to be too much of a perfectionist with this. That's not what you want. All right, so that is the base. And then we're going to start to make some branches. So initially, we always start from the center and then we just move the brush in the way that the branch grows. And then we're just going to lift off with a light hand. That way it's always thinner at the end of the stroke. And then basically each little section will kind of feel like you're making a V or a Y. And there's some twirling a little bit as I go. I'm picking up some white because I am dealing with some wet white paint that's happening. If yours is dry, again, no concerns on that. You can certainly just pause, wait for yours to dry, and then come back over the surface. For now, I'm just kind of scraping that off to the side, reloading with black. But always make sure, again, you start from the center and then go out and lift off with a light hand. little twirls too into the paint, kind of spin it between your fingertips. That'll help spin it back out again. That's really key because the bristles can get filled with paint and become very thick and then you won't get those tiny little lines. So again, you have to remember a lot of repetition on this loading up in this way is again, twirl it between your fingertips, get it thin back out again to a nice fine point.
And your tree can be as simple, or if you just really love the therapy of this, you can keep going. Pretty quickly here, I'm probably just gonna let mine be very simple here and just be done. can kind of fill back in here with a little bit of black. All right, so we've got a really good tree going on here. I like it. Just very simple, minimal, in the winter, no leaves. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about this beautiful bird that we have going on here. So I'm going to go ahead and do the midsection. I'm just going to place it right about here. And again, this is something to wear if you do not feel comfortable with this process, you can go back to the traceable and place it on when everything is dry. Just remember to cut out that one little section around the bird and place shiny side graphite paper down, line art on top, use your pencil and you can trace right over the top. It'll be beautiful and then you just paint right into that shape. But I'm going to go ahead and teach you how to paint this. So again, we just kind of make, make a little round circular body in here. And then I'm going to come up to one side and make what looks like a parentheses. Do the same thing here on the other side. That's how simple it is. That's why I think, my goodness, it's just so easy just to paint it. how easy it was. Super, super easy. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and rinse out. Do a little tacky there. We're going to let that continue to dry because at the very end we'll probably use some of this lovely metallic to go over the top as an option. Or you can just leave it more painterly with these colors here. That's more of a matte look. So it just kind of depends on what you like there. All right, now we're gonna to start to work in some patterns. So this is gonna be fun. All right, so on this top section here, um, we'll be coming in and switch plates. We'll go back to our blues and I'm gonna load back up with some primary cyan blue. Do another nice nickel sized dollop of that. Clean little bit brush. And let's go ahead and do a little twirl here into it. You know what, I'm going to grab a little bit of water too, just to make that more fluid, easier to move. And we're doing a spiral of sorts. It's going to feel a little bit like that, but basically not completely circular. But we'll definitely be kind of working in towards the center to feel kind of like a spiral. Just a fun abstract shape. Making a line that goes back up and then inside. And if you like the spiral shape, of course you can do that too. I'm going to show you what that looks like just in case you like that look. So you can always do little spirals in your mountain top. So that's up to you. Just for fun, I'll just include a little bit of both. Liking a little bit of water with the mix here. Just kind of helps move the paint more easily. I'll work that back in. I 
And again, with this pattern, you can do either one or the other, or combine the two, like I'm doing. And still just using that primary cyan blue. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. By the way, I am a line teaching, just so you know. It's okay. It's no big deal. It's real life. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. I'm going to get some snacks. Oh, okay. Awesome, sweet pie. Oh, so wait, wait, wait. Are you going to Walmart? Yeah. Oh, fun. Okay. Well, have fun. You know what to do. I do. You're the man. All right. Love you. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be fun. I'm excited. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's no big deal. So, continue in with these shapes. All right, so we have this space that's kind of around here, and I'm just going to kind of doodle, if you will, and fill in with just tiny little strokes. It's just very fun. And then I'm also gonna show you how to do another really fun shape, too. So I'm gonna rinse out dry off and I'm going to use the handle of the brush. So I'm going to take that handle, I'm going to dip it into the primary cyan blue and then I'm just going to push down and see how it just makes fun little polka dots everywhere. So that's a really fun little trick. Super easy way to add some fun pattern and I'll just kind of sprinkle these all around in here. Alright, so we've got a lot of pattern happening there, and of course polka dots are optional, but it's a nice opportunity for me to tell you how to make that little fun pattern in there. So you can make it a little more simple and minimal, or you can really fill it in. So, up to you. Okay, next pattern is going to be a very simple like floral pattern. But we're going to get back to that turquoise. So I've got my primary cyan blue, my viridian, and we're going to grab a lot of white here because we want the contrast over the top. Let's grab more viridian. I want a little more of that turquoise feel to it. So pretty. Okay, so we've got of that to work with and still using a little bit brush 
nice and loaded out, do a little bit of a spin. And then I'm going to go ahead and just do, basically what I do is I just kind of push and pull in. in a circle. So it's kind of like a little flower shape. Very, very simple. So I want to kind of peek in from the side, but see how fun that is? Very fun childlike quality to it. And it just looks like you've got a little flower garden, abstracted flower garden happening there. So it's super lovely. All right, let's go ahead and rinse out. Okay, now we're going to do the contrast with the dark basically happening on this section and a different pattern. So I'm going to come back in with my little bit brush, just grab a little bit of water and our primary cyan blue. And we're just going to do fun little dashes. How easy is that? Very easy. Really cool. All right, now we're going to go a little bit light again. So we can have contrast up here. And I'm just going to do another thin pattern. like a little free and loose funky chevron. Yeah, I just love this because it is very easy for beginners and just makes these fun, funky 
beautiful patterns. All right, so now we're gonna come back in and separate out our mountains. And we are dry. See, we can't use this until the paint is really, really dry. So, hmm, <laughs> I may be a little stuck, but what I may do is just stick to more paint and then let you do this as an option. This does come with the kit, so you can use this if you want to, but again, uh, really heed the caution on this, because this is a nice marker and you want it to last. So just make sure all your paint's completely dry and then you can use this to kind of go nuts with more pattern if you want to. You can color this in completely. Um, you can do, as long as it's dry, I think we're going to be okay. Like, I'm going to show you a little section. But you can see how pretty and bright it is. Maybe you can. Well, I sure see it, but... Definitely is very metallic. Let me bring it close, but you can kind of see that is. Again, as long as this is dry, it's going to be okay. Yeah, because it'll ruin your marker instantly if it hits wet paint. So yeah, everywhere that it's dry, it's just kind of very fluid, very easy to move over the top. Sneak in here. So you can see that's really wet still in there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it is so. Just have kind of a thick layer of paint over the top. I don't want to go near that for a little bit because it is pretty wet still. Now I'm going to show you what this looks like. This is dry. And you can kind of do a metallic finish over the top. Roll that in. And that'll give you more of like a shimmery sound coming in here. It may seem a bit subtle in the monitor. I'm not sure how much of the metallic you're picking up on, but if I bring it closer, you can see, and I'm gonna have to take more layers and everything, really, like fill it in to where you don't see the line work as much. Yeah, see that helped. But you can definitely see how it's got a bit more of a metallic feel and more coverage that can come into that center area. But I would recommend it being, it's still just a little bit tacky, which is a bit risky for me, but I'm trying to record the class without interruption. So, but for you at home, just pause it, let it completely set up and dry for a while, and then go ahead and work this in. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of a sketch here into it. Trying to be very light. Gives you the general idea. Now, I think we're okay for me to kind of finish out this little line right here. And I'm gonna stay away from that. It's still a little wet there. All right. Okay. So. That is really beautiful. And there's a couple more options you can do 
optional. You could do a wavy line. See, I still have this wet paint in the center, so I'm not going to do it right now because I still feel like it's risky. But you could do, and also you may not desire the look of it, but you could do a wavy line with the gold metallic marker right through the center, but it basically just feels like a, just a curve here and then a curve here and then a curve there. So just kind of curve out and then the other direction and then down. So, see that's still wet. I'm like, oh, I'm trying to find a dry spot. See that's still, they're all wet. Mm. Can't do it yet. Yeah, and that's, oh no, I'm off. Hold on. Oh Lord, how long was that off? Hopefully it just went. What is going on? Okay. All right, so just as a recap, basically I was just talking about, I don't know how much of that you lost on the end, but basically using this marker, I like it the way it is. I think at this point where it's just nice blocks of pattern for our mountaintops here. But if you do wanna do a little bit of a wave in here, you can. So you can take your line and just kinda of do a curve and then to there. And then kind of curve it down and then curve it down. I think it's going to be it's definitely easier to do it with this. I can show you with paint though, just to give you the reference of the line work. Let's go back to a little bit of our cadmium yellow. Let's get a visual on. There we go, cadmium yellow. And let's do a lot of white. that out. So it's really pretty with paint too, but that's another option. So again, you may or may not like this finishing touch that I'm doing here. If you liked it the way it was before, see, you can leave the simplicity of it the way it was before. So that is up to you. I like it both ways. I don't know, I'm a little torn, honestly. And do a little bit more of an outline with the paint. Just make it look like it belongs a little bit more there. I'll grab a little bit more of my cadmium yellow. And this could also just be a base too, so that whenever I'm done, I can also go back over these yellow lines with some more of that gold metallic and just make it a little bit more glossy on top when it dries. Then 
have a little bit of a cut in over the top of my tree here, so I'm going to come back to my Mars Black, re-tidy that up. Yeah, that's pretty. Alright, beautiful. Now, the only other thing I can think of to do here is like when it dries a little bit, so you can see, you can come back in and work in a little bit more of your white, kind of crisscross that back in a little bit, so it's a bit more opaque in there. Remember to use a light hand, flat side of the brush, kind of work that in a little bit. But other than that, we've got a beautiful painting that looks fabulous. I think we can call that done. So again, this is a very fun and easy painting for beginners with lots of fun patterns that just help you relax with the process. Very relaxing, easy, easy art, easy painting. Great for beginners. Um, so everything that you need, this comes as a kit. We provide the record album. Um, if you don't want to go and shop for all these different parts, um, we provide everything that you need. We provide the album and the paints and the markers and the pencils and the graphite paper and the line art and all the fun stuff. And of course, this online tutorial will remain up for you as always. So it's a great value and a lot of fun, great for home parties, all that good stuff. And if you have any questions or lovely comments, please leave those below. I love to get back with people and help them out with whatever they need. So again, everything you need that can be found at tipsyartist.com. Again, tipsyartist.com. And you help support a small family business, and we're very grateful for y'all. And y'all have a beautiful rest of the day. And we'll see you soon. We love y'all. Toodles.